Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Are you ready to worship Jesus Christ tonight? Hallelujah. Let's welcome His presence.
sing tonight to rejoice forevermore. Amen. Let's sing this new song. One thing. Amen.
tonight, let's uh, come before the throne of God in prayer. Let's uh, give the way before the Lord of our churches here in Thailand, here in Lapra, in Kundo, and in Chamai. May God protect each and every one of us from the COVID uh, virus. May God bless all our missionary works. Also, all our church leaders, our fellowship leaders, lift their names before God. May God also help and intervene in every nation that desperately needs the work, need the work of God, the hands of God, in their situation, especially in India, in Myanmar, also in Indonesia and Malay, Malaysia. Also, live before the Lord our situation in the Philippines, also here in Thailand. Also, release God's blessing to His nation, uh, to His homeland, the nation of Israel. Amen. May, may God uh, help us and hear our prayers tonight. Continue to live before the Lord. Brother Betty and Brother Benji, bring God strength in their bodies. May God touch them and bring God supernatural healing. Also for Brother Peter Henderson, let's lift his name before the Lord for healing from uh, chest infection. Amen. It's uh, painful, so let's pray God right now will bring his healing touch on the body yes, of amen. Brother Peter oh, Henderson. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray for God's anointing and God will speak to us. Amen. You speak. Amen. You, you pray to the Lord tonight. Lord, as I yes. open my heart, you speak to me. You reveal your word to me tonight. Amen. If you have needs, amen, why don't you lift your hands before the Lord and let's worship the Lord together and lay down before Him all our requests. Let's worship God. Father in heaven, we worship you and we honor you tonight, oh God, for everything that you have done in our lives and even for the things that you are about to do in our lives. For your children tonight, Lord, we open our service to give you, Father God, that you will bless us, you will bless even your word, put your words in my heart, God, as I speak, I can be your message, God, let this be a message of encouragement that will stir up my faith, O oh Lord God, even I pray tonight, God, for healing to Brother Benji, Brother Benji, Brother Tina, and your son of God, and to those who are sick. Touch their bodies, you are our Jehovah Papa, you are our greatest physician, and that nothing's too hard nor too difficult with you, Father God. You are able, Lord God, Father, to heal every sickness, so oh God, for by your wounds, God, by your stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Lord God, Father, for helping us tonight. We want to give back all the glory and honor and power and blessing only in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior, and everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a song of all the guys. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We would like to welcome you all to uh, our evening service, online church service. It's always a great blessing for each and every one of us to be able to minister to you through the preaching of the Word of God and also to be able to have this great opportunity, I should say, a great privilege to each and every one of us to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. May God bless you to all our online viewers. May God bless you for taking time to worship and receive the Word of God tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, I hope to see you again on Wednesday for our midweek church. For man is not lived by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We need to feed and continuously nourish our spiritual bodies as we also take care of our physical body. If our body eats three times a day, we need also to feed our soul. Amen. And the food of our soul is the word of of God. So I'll see you on Wednesday through our online midweek church. Every Thursday and Friday we have our Bible study and prayer. Thursday is our English Bible study and prayer. Friday is our Filipino Bible study and prayer. Amen. It's always a great blessing to see each and every one of you in our Zoom meeting. Amen. For those who want to uh, uh, watch again our previous and past preaching services. Amen. You can uh, uh, proceed to uh, YouTube, our YouTube channel, Father's House Bangkok, and our Facebook page is also under CFM Bangkok. Amen. This is our Zoom ID number and password. 
And uh, so please take notes so you can join our weekly gathering Bible study. You have questions, you have testimonies, you have prayer requests, and that's the best time to uh, speak out and uh, to be willing to listen and help you intercede in your prayer requests. Amen. Praise the Lord. So tonight, it's a great privilege for us again to uh, hear the Word of God. I would like to encourage you to all our online viewers, don't be distracted by the food in front of you. Don't be distracted by your loved ones that are calling you by name and trying to uh, divert your attention. Amen. For the next uh, 45 minutes, amen, let's focus on the Word of God and respect the presence of God tonight. I'd like to preach a very simple message about God rewards the faithful. Amen. God rewards the faithful. Amen. There is a difference between faith and faithful. Remember when we had that sinner's prayer and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It took our faith to do that. Amen. What saved us that time that we prayed is because of our faith. It's because of our belief in God. We understand the definition of faith based on Hebrews 11.1 1 that says, Faith is the substance of hope, is the substance of things we hope for, the evidence of things we do not see. So you see, when we pray that sinner's prayer, that moment, that day that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it took our faith to do that. Amen. So it's our faith that saved us. On the other hand, when we talk about faithful, it talks about the person that do not or that does not only believe, but a person that continuously does the will of God. So you see, faith is just the initial step for us to be saved. But so we can continue to serve the Lord, we need to be faithful. Amen. I look at the definition of the word faithful. To be more exact, it means loyal. It means someone who has a firm and constant devotion to something. That is faithful. A person that is loyal, a person that is that has a firm and constant devotion to something. And in relation to Christianity, our devotion or our constant devotion and loyalty belongs to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I like the definition when it talks about constancy. Another word for that is consistency. Here's my own definition of faithful. A person who is dedicated. A person who is uh, a person who is uh, consistent in his relationship with the Lord. A person who is consistent in doing the will of God. Amen. A person who has dedication in doing what God has instructed him to do. Amen. I tell you what, God honors and God rewards a faithful person. Amen. Amen. During this time of pandemic, my brothers and sisters, this year we have experienced the third wave of pandemic. And we cannot avoid sometimes that we get discouraged. We get discouraged with our with our with our present or current situation, with our job with our uh, ministry, you know, with, with, with many things, with our calling to God. But you know what? There's a man in the Bible named Matthias. And he was also a hero. This name Matthias was mentioned by Luke, or Apostle Luke, the author of the book of Acts. It is in reference to the prophecy in Psalms where one of the apostles who will betray Jesus had to be replaced. So that situation
situation, they have been in the prayer room, in the upper room, where they got it together just seven days after the resurrection of Jesus. There were around 120 disciples that assembled and prayed for seven days. And around the seventh day, they have to fill the missing slot. Missing slot about apostleship. Okay? Remember, there were 12 apostles, and one of them, named Judas, betrayed Jesus. So only 11 of them was left. Now, what's the qualification to become or to fill in the missing slot? In Acts 1 20 it says, For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his dwelling place be desolate, and let no one live in it, and let another take his office. Verse 21 Therefore, of this man who have accompanied us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. In other words, when you talk about Jesus went in and out, you know, sometimes Jesus' presence was with them. Sometimes Jesus' presence was, was out of sight. Amen? It's not like all day long that they have to, they have to go back to their respective places also. Okay? So it's not like 24 hours physically the presence of God or presence of Jesus was there. So that's why it says Jesus went in and Jesus went out among us. Okay? Beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they were discussing about what's the qualification of the one that will replace Judas. So they said, the one that is faithful, the one that has been there, the one that has been consistently, consistently uh, present during the time of the ministry of Jesus. 23. And they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen. Verse 25. To take part in this ministry and apostleship. Okay? So meaning, uh, there's one lacking in the 12 apostles, so they are praying to God, who's going to replace Judas, from which Judas by transgression felt that he might go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Amen. Blessed be the reading of the word of God. So here is the real qualification to become an apostle of Jesus Christ, and that is to be faithful that they had to be there from the beginning of the ministry of Jesus up to the end. It doesn't really matter how good you are, how smart, nor how intelligent, how rich you are, how eloquent you are when you talk. That's not the qualification. Maybe you are better than the others, but that is not the qualification. They chose the apostle, and it fell on Matthias, and Matthias was numbered as one of the twelve apostles because of his faithfulness. Amen. So it was not all about that Matthias was a good preacher. It was not, Matthias was not chosen because he, he can sing well. Matthias was not chosen because of his leadership qualities, but simply because he is faithful. Simply because that he is loyal during the ins and outs of Jesus. He is doing, he is serving behind the scenes with no, you know, sensational background, with no recognition. I never seen in the Bible that these apostles were 
you know, they were singing, they were entertaining people. Because those were not the qualities that Jesus was looking for to become the apostle of Jesus. What Jesus was looking is faithfulness. Amen. I don't know if Matthias had special capabilities or special, special abilities, you know. But what I can see in him is he was always there. Amen. Amen. They are available. They are faithful. They are loyal. They did nothing to cause them to be recognized in man's eyes. So, qualification is not based on skills. Qualification is not based on, on your talent, not on your education, not on how good looking you are. God is saying tonight, I am not choosing my apostle based on a how many number of Bible verses that you can quote or how well do you play music. But I make my choice on the basis of faithfulness. On the basis of your dedication. On the basis of your loyalty. On the basis of your consistency. God has called you to do things that may seem small to you. But I tell you what, there's no such thing as small or big. Amen. God is looking at your heart. Amen. And besides, this is actually what Jesus Christ was saying. If you are faithful in little, then you can be faithful in bigger things. Amen. So here, God sometimes would test us if we are faithful with the little things that we have. For example, it says here in Mark 9, 41, if anyone gives you even a cup of water because you belong to the Messiah, I tell you the truth, that person will surely be rewarded. So you see, it's just a very simple or little act of kindness. Bring a cup of water to a servant of God or to someone. It only tells us not just by being warm to people. If you continue to do that, though how little, how small the task is, but if you consistently do that, amen, you will surely be rewarded. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. People may have not recognized what you do on earth, but your real boss is up there and sees everything you do for him. Amen. You just stay faithful in your prayer, in your, in your, in joining our online church services, in your giving, in supporting the work of God. I tell you what, God sees all those things. And God, you know, one of the names of Jesus Christ is faithful and true. In the book of Revelations, it says that when Jesus Christ will come down from heaven, he will, he'll be riding in a white horse and on his thigh was written or is written faithful and true. Why? Because Jesus is faithful to fulfill what he has promised you. And here's his promise. He will reward you while there, riding in a white horse, he said, I bring with me my rewards for you. Hallelujah. That's why even how little that you do, amen. even nobody notices what you are doing, amen, for God, surely God notices that. Hallelujah. Just be faithful, be consistent, be constant, be loyal, Amen. Just continue to serve the Lord. Even at times you don't feel like serving the Lord. Just continue switching your phone on and log into our Facebook page account and join our online church service even if you don't feel like listening. Meaning to say, when you are down, when you are 
when you are at the point or at the verge of, you know, you are overwhelmed with problems, amen, just continue doing what you have been doing, amen. That is faithfulness. Even at times you don't feel like worshiping God. But because that is the right thing to do, that is faithfulness and God rewards that, amen. I really would like to encourage you, brothers and sisters, especially the faithful one, God rewards your faithfulness. There are too many greenhouse Christians. You know what are greenhouse Christians? Greenhouse Christians bloom in a protected environment only. As long as they have no wind, no rain, no storm, they are faithful to God. But when the storm hits them, when the rain falls on them, you find them weak. And you find them in a situation where they lose their faithfulness to God because things are not going well. These are greenhouse Christians. They only serve the Lord when everything is okay. But when they are hit with problems, you cannot see them in church anymore. You cannot even see them joining our online church. These are greenhouse Christians. God tonight is looking for people who will stay with Him through the ins and outs of life. And He is using those times, amen, to expand your faith. We know that. We've been preaching about that, that God allows problems so that our faith will grow, so that we will become mature once, we, you know, we overcome all these trials and problems. God is using them to teach us to continue to put our trust in Him. I have just sent a message to my friend this afternoon and saying that I pray that people now, after experiencing, you know, one problem, uh, another problem, and just like overwhelming problems, people will come to a point to realize that all they need in their life is God. Yeah. And not really to depend on their own understanding, not to depend on their own sufficiency, not to depend on their own reliance, not to depend on their own resources, but to depend on God. I believe, brothers and sisters, pandemic COVID-19 like this is just God's way of telling us to stop and pause for a moment and to think about the things that are essential. And things that are essential are something to do with your soul, something to do with your spirituality, something to do, if you're a Christian tonight, something to do with your faithfulness. We are not greenhouse Christians tonight. We are not the kind of people that will serve the Lord, that will be faithful only during good times. Amen. Amen. That is not faithfulness in the first place. Tonight, maybe you feel discouraged. You feel like giving up. I tell you what, this is not the time to give up. This is not the time to, to quit. This is not the time to say, I surrender. But I tell you what, this is, we are now on the verge. Of, we are now seeing the finish line. Hallelujah. I will always tell people, Jesus is coming back. We can see the coming of the Lord is imminent. We can see, we can feel with our surroundings that is telling us and pointing us to one direction and that is Jesus is coming very soon. That's why, let's not give up. This is not the time to quit, but this is the time to continue doing what God has told us to do for He is faithful to finish what He has begun in you. God will honor and reward your faithfulness. Just imagine, you know, you're just very discouraged now about these days, but haven't you realized that we have already surpassed one year of pandemic and you are still here? Hallelujah! You're still able to eat burger, you're still able to sing, you are in good health, 
you surpass and overcome all these uh, uh, all these trials and challenges that this pandemic has brought us. Isn't God thankful, Amen? Yeah. If you were able to surpass a year of pandemic, then God is faithful to finish, Amen. His faithfulness in your life, Amen. Yeah. One day, that's to refresh us. The trumpet shall sound, and Jesus brings his reward. Amen. Jesus Christ said, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. My question tonight, brothers and sisters, what have you done? What have you done for the Lord? What have you done with your life? Did you use that life to serve the Lord? Or did you use your life to serve yourself? To serve your ambition? Jesus Christ is reminding us that He is coming very soon and He brings with Himself the reward for those persons. Amen. According to what they have done. Amen. So my encouragement tonight, I don't have three points tonight. Amen. I just would like and feel to encourage each and everyone, especially to the faithful ones, especially to the committed ones. Amen. But let's not give up. Let's not get tired of doing what is good. Amen. For at a proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Amen. Keep on attending. Keep on worshiping God. Keep on inviting people. Keep on sharing the link that we have. Keep on reaching out for people. Keep on praying. Keep on joining our Zoom Bible study. Keep on joining our prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Never give up. Never let go of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't bail out. Don't give up at the slightest problem. You know, we are not, as I always say, we are not spared of problems. You may be old or young, boy or girl, whoever you are, we will always have problem. After one problem, here comes another problem. But I tell you what, just to encourage you, let's be like a koala bear. You know what a koala bear? It always is, his, his, uh, his attitude is always to hang on to cling on, amen, and never to give up. Remember the time when Jacob was asking something from God and he would wrestle with God through the angel and he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That's the kind of persistence that God wants us amidst these troubles, amidst this problem, amidst this pandemic. Let's not give up with these problems, amen. Hallelujah. I remember one sister in the Philippines. She had a she had a relational problem. But she said to her husband, Don't forbid me from going to church and pray. Because that is my oxygen. If you take that out of my life, I will die. Hallelujah. Truly, brothers and sisters. Our relationship with God, our communion with God, our conversation with God, our regular talking to the Lord through prayer, that is our oxygen. Amen. I am blessed with one of our sisters that said, Pastor, I hope that we will soon reopen. That was like a few months ago when we were still doing online, before this online. He said, I hope, Pastor, that we can go to church, I really miss church. And then when we reopened, truly she came to church to worship God. I like that, you know, she she lived, she walked her talk. And to say what she said, she really meant it. She was faithful even, even, even during these times. Because I see people that are just very cliche in their statement as a pastor, when will the church be open physically? I miss church, Pastor. But when church reopens, you cannot see them in church. Where is where is your faithfulness? 
Hallelujah. So again, faithfulness, God honors that. In our what in our regular activities in the in church, and though we are limited of our physical gathering, but we are not limited. We are not uh, we are not limited with our online gathering. We still continue to do what we have been doing, amen. But let us just continue to do it, amen, and continue to dig deeper in our root of our relationship with Jesus Christ, amen. God is faithful. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. In the story in the Bible, Jeremiah questioned God because of many problems that he experienced. And God answered him, you know, that's just a slight problem. You need to overcome this slight problem because how can you face the future problem that are most likely bigger than now? How can you face that if you cannot face this small problem right now? God wants us to learn in this life. We just need to be faithful. We just need to be consistent. Why? Because God will not leave us and drop us along the way. God did not just save us and leave us in the middle of our Christian walk. Amen. Again, God is faithful to finish what He had begun in us. And one more thing. What advantage if we are faithful to God? It gives us a glimpse of intimacy. Going back to Matthias. But I have been there everywhere, whenever Jesus, wherever Jesus Christ goes to minister and to do something. He is he was always there. He had been there. Every miracle Jesus performed, every sermon that Jesus preached, he was there. He was an eyewitness. He was a first hand witness to every miracle and every preaching and every uh, supernatural thing that Jesus Christ performed. Yeah. You know, in our lives sometimes maybe our faith will be challenged. Our faith will be challenged in the sense that people will question God. People will question the credibility of God. People will question the stories in the Bible and they would say, oh, that's the feeding of Jesus of the 5,000 people. That's, I think that's just an exaggeration. You know, uh, raising Lazarus back to life, I think that's, you know, that's exaggeration. I don't believe that that's too good to be true. Oh, I see. This drug addict that had been, you say, that had been changed, that had been transformed, I, and that's just a, you know, that's just a drama, that's just an act, it's just a fraud. I tell you what, we can counter them by saying to them, I am a first-hand witness. I was there. I was there. I had been there. I was a first-hand witness to the miracle of God. In fact, amen, I am a living testimony that Jesus Christ exists. Amen. Maybe you, and, you know, though we are not called to argue, Maybe you don't know how to quote verses, but your mere life that is transformed by the power of God is already is enough, sufficient enough to tell people, amen, that Jesus is real, amen. amen. A man with an experience is never at the mercy of a man with an argument. If you were there and you saw it for yourself, they can argue. It's not real. That is your personal encounter and that is irrefutable. Amen. Hallelujah. So now brothers and sisters, whenever, not whenever, amen. Now we have problems, amen. But I tell you what, like how God corrected Nehemiah. Let's not complain about our problems. The trouble you face today is training you to be strong for the more difficult situations you will face in the future. Proverbs 24.10 If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What does it mean, brothers and sisters? 
whenever you are hit by problems and you know when when you give up when you faint when you get weak it tells you what kind of Christian you are it says King Solomon said your strength is small that's why you see Christians whenever they encounter problems they easily get discouraged they easily faint they easily get weak it only shows what kind of faith they have it only shows what kind of how mature they are as Christians amen but again God is faithful in every problem that we encounter brothers and sisters it's God is always faithful amen for us to be able to pass through these problems imagine many people die every day why is it that you're still alive you are able to hear me you're able to see you're able to write you're able to do many things amen Meaning to say God still has a plan for your life and when you will be still alive next year or next month and should God tarry should God delay you will still experience more problems but because we have overcome this is slight problems that we have amen then we can also overcome greater problems because we have experienced God now, then we will continue to experience God in our future. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I said, what, are they, what, what constitutes a good heart is to, have, to be humble. Amen. We need to be humble brothers and sisters before God. One verse says, it is easier for a couple to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Though some people don't believe it, but I would like to drive at one point, even by using this, by using this illustration. They say that a camel, uh, that a camel in the middle is, if, when you talk about eye of the needle, it, it's a picture of a gate, even. It's a gate like this. It's like an ark. For an enter, to be able to, ent to, to, to come in or to enter it, the camel has to bow down. So he can enter the eye of the needle, the eye of the gate. This is a picture of humility. This is a picture of realizing, amen, that before God's presence, we will say, Lord, we are really nothing without you. I cannot really do it. I am limited. I am weak. And that I need you, Lord. Amen. This is the opposite of people that, that, that are self-sufficient and self-reliant. Okay? What do you mean by that? People that are self-reliant and self-sufficient would not come to them because they thought that they are still sufficient. They thought that they still have the resources. This is the reason why they still would not come to God because they still have the strength to do it. But for us Christians like a camel, we need to humble ourselves. Even though you say how strong you are, a humble person will always say before God, Lord, I am weak without you. I cannot do it on my own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation 21, 14. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations. This is a place called heaven, or New Jerusalem. The wall of the city a city that's Jerusalem. New Jerusalem had 12 foundations, and of them were the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb. I pray tonight that this will get us excited to one day we will go there to the Jerusalem city and we'll have a literal touch. We'll have a literal touch of the 12 foundations, and one of those 12 foundations was the name of Matthias. One of those 12 foundations in claim was the name of Matthias. And you will be remember and you will remember how Matthias did it. Not because that he was eloquent, not because that he is powerful, but because he was faithful. Hallelujah. Matthias perhaps will say, I did not preach like Peter. 
I did not work miracles like Paul. I did not write book like Matthew. But Lord, I was there. I was faithful. As I end tonight, God rewards the faithful. We know the parable of the talent that was written by Jesus Christ, spoken by Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 23. We know the story that the master left talents to his three servants. The first one he gave five, the, first, the second one he gave three, the third one he gave one. And then after a long time he came back and gave an account. These three servants had to give an account to their servants, what did they do with their talents that this bad, their master gave and given them and entrusted them. The first servant said, Master, see the five talents that you gave me, I work on it, now it's ten. And Jesus and the master said, Well done, you good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. Same is true with the second servant, he said, Master, this three times that you gave, I work on it, and because of that, I multiplied it, now it became six. And the Bible said that the master was happy, and he said, well done, you good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. But the third servant, whom one talent was given, and said, I was afraid, so I just, uh, I hid it beneath the ground, because I'm afraid. And the Bible said that the master was not happy and got angry actually with the third servant who did nothing with the talent that the master had given him. It tells us tonight, brothers and sisters, that with everything that God had given you, you will give an account to God one day. It's just like how the three servants had given an account before their master. We as children of God, who all these resources that God has given us, we will give an account. And what an exciting day it is that when my Creator, my Savior will say to me one day, Well done, you good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Master. Because you did not waste your life. Because you did not procrastinate with all those resources that God had entrusted you. You did not waste your talent. You did not waste an opportunity, promotion, job, high-paying job. Amen. You did not waste it for your own pleasure. Or you, God will say one day, well done, you good and faithful servant. Amen. All of you who feel like you are not worthy in the kingdom, thank him that he has placed, that he has a place for you. And great will be your reward. I tell you what, each and every one of us, do not underestimate what resource, what capacity, what capability or ability that you have. You can do still something for God and be faithful, amen, with that task that God has given you. Remember our God, we call it God Mother, one of the sponsors during our wedding. Now, she is like maybe 88 years old and still goes to church and pray. Two years ago and before the pandemic, she still joins the choir at that age, 88, faithful in giving her tithes and her offering, faithful in going to church, faithful even, you know, her, her physical body would say enough, but she would still go. That's a challenge for us brothers and sisters, amen, who have, amen, the strength still to do more for God. Amen. Travels around 8 to 10 kilometers every day to be in church for prayer. And tonight, I also would like to commend our brothers and sisters who have been faithful in every ministry that God has given them. Who are not only faithful when good times are around. Who are not only faithful when God bless them. Remember, when you say faithful, there is consistency in 
your loyalty. There is consistency in what you are doing. God will bless you for that. God will honor you for that. God rewards you for that. Even with all the finances that God has entrusted to you, I tell you what, your faithfulness, even God counts that. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers. Brothers and sisters, the Master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. You know what? These things, these words that Jesus, that the Master told the servant, this is actually God telling us tonight that one day, when we stand before the Lord and you have proven your service to God to be faithful in small things, when we get to the Jerusalem city, God will entrust to you bigger things. If you have been faithful in your giving, God will entrust to you greater finances when you get to heaven. You say, Pastor, there's still finances? I tell you what, we still, we, remember, we still be having our regular life in heaven. But the only difference is that everything will be perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. So be faithful in small things that God has given you. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Just continue to be faithful. God is a rewarder of people who is faithful to his kingdom. God never requires us to be successful. You know why? Success is only found one time in the Bible. I hope you will not misquote me tonight. There is nothing wrong with success. When you obey God, He will make you successful. But our ultimate goal is not success, but faithfulness. To God. This is what Father Teresa said. God has not called me to be successful. He called me to be faithful. If you are faithful to God, He will bless everything with Him. Let's bow our heads. While all our heads are bowed, all our eyes are closed, Simple encouragement for my for the, uh, believers tonight to be faithful in what you have started in your service to the Lord. Be faithful in small things, even though how small and little it is. God notices that and God will honor that. God enlists that in the book of rewards. Before I continue with my prayer, I would like to talk to my to my friends. You are listening right now, and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know Jesus, but you did not yet invite Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Why don't you do it tonight? It's a prayer of uh, it's a prayer of uh, asking the Lord to forgive your sins, and it's a prayer of inviting the Lord to be the Savior and Lord of your life. If you want to do that, let me help you in a simple prayer. You mean it from your heart and you say it, Lord Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross because of my sins. On the third day, you rose again from the dead. Today, I repent of my sins. I turn away from all my wickedness and I open my heart. Come in, Lord Jesus. I invite you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Wash me by your precious blood. I receive your forgiveness as I also forgive those people that have sinned against me. Help me to be faithful from this day forward. Help me to be a trustworthy person from this day forward. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me pray to my, let me pray 
to our to all my brothers and sisters, amen. No problems. We don't talk about problems. Problems are part of our life. Problems are partner of our life. And God allows that so that our dependency or our dependence will always be on God. But maybe you feel like quitting. You feel like giving up. You feel cold in your service to the Lord. I tell you what, this is not the time to get cold. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to surrender. But all the more I encourage you, this is the time to continue serving the Lord. To be faithful because God will reward you one day because of your faithfulness. Let there be consistency in what you're doing. Don't just watch. Don't just join the online church once in a while. Don't just watch Sunday morning. Don't just watch Sunday nights. I tell you what, if you love your soul, you take time. God has been pampering us with His Word. Hallelujah. During this time of pandemic, all our social media accounts have been filled with the Word of God. Be faithful, brothers and sisters, to feed your soul. Be committed, amen, even in your ministry. In your ministry of giving, in your ministry of prayer, in your ministry of encouragement, hallelujah, in your online attendance, that will mean your faithfulness and God notices everything. Tonight, God is speaking to you. God is convicting you. Hallelujah. The devil wants to take you and pull you away. The devil wants you to be diverted with other things. I tell you what, if you will not do it, most likely you will be doing something that is not the will of God. Do, amen. Get involved. Join church activities. Join. Get involved in reaching out for people, praying for people, interceding for one another. Build your relationship with your brothers and sisters. God did not save you just to protect your own biological family, but protect and even serve the family of God. Tonight, you ask yourself, are you faithful? Am I faithful? Am I consistent? Am I loyal with, with my relationship with God? Am I dedicated to every task that God has given me? Am I faithful? As you pray tonight, amen. We'll sing this song, One Thing I Desire.
Do you look back?